trial that started today, the state of Michigan versus Kamaya Hassel. She's accused of plotting with her lover to murder her husband, U.S. Army Sergeant Tyrone Hassel III. He was cunned down just outside of his family's home on New Year's Eve 2018. Police say the murder murderers, alleged murderers, Kamaya and Jeremy, planned the murder to get her husband out of the way and collect 400K of his army pension. Court just wrapped up for the day. We're also covering a very tragic case out of Georgia against a Georgia couple accused of killing their foster child. Jennifer Rosenbaum is accused of killing her two-year-old foster daughter, Layla Daniel. The defendant said she died because she choked on a chicken tender, but an autopsy revealed blunt force trauma that caused internal bleeding when Layla's pancreas ruptured. Terrible case. And finally, we had closing arguments today in the trial against Roy Coons in Tennessee. This is the man who is accused of the brutal rape and murder of Johanna Ortega in her trailer. Johanna's mother, who testified earlier in the trial, broke down during the prosecution's rebuttal closings when Pam Anderson, the prosecutor, showed the karate belt that was wrapped around her daughter's neck when the body was discovered. We're listening to some of the prosecution's closing in this horrible case against Roy Coons. What do you make of the closing, so what you heard? I mean, it sounds like the prosecutor feels that the DNA evidence proved every single aspect of the case. Like, um, what I found interesting, he was talking about how Roy Coons got into the trailer. Like, the only way to know that is if an eyewitness is telling you, I saw this, or if there was some DNA left in the window or somewhere close to the window. Well, we do know that there was his DNA found by the window, but of right. course he tried to say, well, that was because before I had been doing some work on that trailer, so there's no surprise that my DNA would be there. But Look, I tell you what I, what I would have thought the prosecutor would have done is to back up every, every assertion of fact with it being supported by the DNA evidence because that's exactly what the defense is had to pick apart is the only thing the defense really had to uh, focus on. And I'm surprised that the DA is not hammering his point home more. All right, let's listen to see how else uh, he does. More prosecution's closings in the case against Roy Coons out of Tennessee. All right, we're listening to more of the prosecution closing arguments in the case against Roy Coons, this horrible case of this 12 year old neighbor girl. Uh, that was brutally strangled, murdered. I'm here with Norman Williams. He's been with me this afternoon. Thanks so much for joining me. Um, let's talk about the details and what we know about this case and whether or not you think by knowing, reading and listening to what we've heard that they're gonna be able to get a conviction. I don't know, it might be a 50-50. I mean, I, I think DNA evidence doesn't lie, but DNA evidence has its limitations. You know, no matter what was deposited allegedly from his body. But they did find DNA on the victim as well from him. That's pretty damning. Now, hard that to hurts. explain. That hurts. That hurts. I mean, that's hard to explain away. Right. It, it, you know, he said, no, nah, I just saw her and I shook her hand and then left. Right. It's, it's just tough. Like, on the body, tough. Anywhere else, because you don't know when the DNA was deposited. And, and there's no way scientifically to determine when the DNA was deposited. You just can tell from whom. And what I've, what I've been struggling with is motive here. Mm -hmm. Do you know what the motive is? No, I mean, what motive could there possibly be to murder a 12-year-old child? Just so sad. Which makes, which makes, which also is a defense argument as well. It's like, why would he do it? But sometimes, you know, truth is stranger than fiction. Yeah, their happen. true crime, as we've learned, is much stranger than fiction, and sometimes we just can't understand the motivations. Speaking of motivations, the motivations for killing a two-year-old little girl. Oh, mm. That's the case we're following out of Georgia, and I can tell you it's back live. Looks like we're back live in the courtroom. We have to get in a quick break, but when we return, we'll take you against, take you in the case against the Rosenbaums out of Georgia. Stay with us.